Welcome everyone to Wager Talk Extra, the Open Championship Edition. I am Andy Lang from wagertalk.com being joined by Nick Borman from wagertalk.com. We have a ton to get to, a little bit of an extended episode on the Open Championship. We're going to break down the course. We're going to give you our favorite players that we want to bet on, our players we're going to bet against. We've got some outrights, some dark horses. We're going to predict the winning score. So we're going to get right into it. Nick and myself both have 5% plays up at wagertalk.com, $29 for each of those. When we have these majors, we have a ton of wagers that the books offer. So uh, we get a lot more opportunities to cash. And uh, Nick and I have been on a really, really nice run in golf. So take advantage of that at wagertalk.com. Let's get into it. We're going to talk about the course. First, we're going to be playing at Royal Liverpool Golf Club. You're going to hear it called Hoy Lake. Um, so if you hear Hoy Lake, that's the exact same course. There's a gigantic lake uh, just just uh, just off to the left, uh, depending what side you're looking at the course. Yeah. Honestly, my first takeaway on this course is I think it's going to play pretty easy uh, this week. The weather is the biggest defense that this course has, and it just doesn't look like it's going to be brutal. It's going to be a little bit rainy, but it doesn't look like it's going to soak the entire course where there's standing water. The wind going to be a little bit of wind but it doesn't look like it's going to get over 20 25 miles an hour which to these guys is really not that much it's fairly flat course uh, it's guarded by some bunkers around the fairways and greens they are going to be deep because of the Lynx style course there's some areas of really long fescue but it, it's it's not a very punishing course it has some interesting out of bounds boundaries that are really close to the fairways those are fun because a wayward shot is an automatic one-shot uh, penalty. Pretty straightforward. Um, for the caliber of the field, I think it's a birdie fest, especially the par fives. I think they torch these par, these par fives. They played here in 2014. Rory shredded it. Um, they've changed some of the holes. They've even added a new hole uh, in 2021 uh, that we'll get to. So it's not exactly the same course, but uh, some fairways are narrow, so accuracy is going to be a little bit more important than length. I believe in 2014, Rory only used his driver four times uh, just because the ball rolls quite a bit. So expect a lot of three woods off the tee because guys are would rather be just a few yards back and, you know, guarantee themselves being the fairway because the approaches are not going to be um, not going to be that that difficult. So they did a great job of doing a hole by hole video. Uh, I have a free article up on wagertalk.com on my profile page. If you want to download it, it's free, and it's got the link so you can see all of the holes. We're going to go through a few here uh, that have my interest. So uh, we see this aerial view. What a cool shot um, that is. But you kind of see how flat it is. There's little hills and mounds throughout the holes, but it's it's not overall a really, really difficult uh, uh, hole with a, with a ton of penalties here. So uh, hot putter and good approaches is the name of the game this week. Let's take a look at hole three. Uh, it's a 426 yard par four. The crazy part about this hole is you got to look off to the right. You're going to see that that it's about a three foot wall that kind of looks like just a, the edge of a square. Anything to the right of those walls is out of bounds. So if you, you're, every player is going to try and go over that. But if you fade it to the right and it doesn't make it over the wall, that is just automatic one shot penalty. So you're going to see guys probably pull out three wood. Uh, they're going to probably try and play right to left to avoid it. Uh, but once you get over the wall, you can't run it through the fairway because the other side of the, the rough is going to be kind of nasty, especially if it rains. It could be thick, kind of be a little bit muddy. Um, so if we could take a look at uh, the next picture of this hole, you're going to see these guys hit the fairway. They're just going to have a really, really easy approach shot. The green, there's nothing to it. So guys hit the fairway, uh, they're going to be throwing a, a dart at a really, really short approach. So hole three right out of the gate, pretty cool hole. And you see that that wall just runs right along that fairway. So uh, right is no good on hole three. Let's take a look at hole five. My guess is this will be the easiest hole on the course. It's a 520 yard par five with not much here. Uh, you can see uh, the birdie is a must. I'm guessing that the winner of the tournament is going to play this at minus three or better. So we can see it kind of bends to the left here. So any player that can uh, play the ball right to left is going to have a nice advantage, but they're going to blast it over that 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 turn and pass those bushes, I believe. With no wind, uh, absolutely no defense to this hole. So we want to take a look at the second picture of, of this hole. 
Um, I mean, again, not too much difficulty here. You do not want to be left in that pot bunker. You definitely don't want to be short. But I think these guys are going to have 200 yards or less coming into the green on a par five. So um, the rain, I think, is going to help these greens be receptive. So the guys are going to be able to control the spin and where they land the ball. This is a birdie hole. If you walk off this hole with par, you feel like you've just given a shot back to the field. So uh, hole three and hole five, guys are going to start off with some pretty low scores. We're going to move ahead to hole 11, 394 par four i think this is my favorite view from the tee the fairway is pretty narrow but you can see just a ton of bumps and hills and uh, the drive can actually be difficult because you, you hit the wrong bump or mound and it could shoot it to the right or the left but if you hit it on the right side of a bump it could shoot it forward leaving an even easier approach shot it's short i think you're going to see a lot of guys uh try and take right or left out of the way so maybe driving iron or, or long iron to control it. And if we want to take a look at the green, the green is kind of, it's kind of like a bowl almost. Um, it's big, it's receptive. I, I don't think guys are going to have too much trouble hitting long into that fescue. I don't think that bunker on the right is going to, you're going to see too many shots in there. So another birdie hole, uh, you just got to uh, make sure you put the ball in the fairway off of, off of the tee. Next, we're going to move to hole 14, 450 yard par four dog leg to the left, but the fairway slopes to the right. So you're kind of fighting this. Uh, you want to you want to kind of put the ball to the left, even though it's a dog leg left, because you know the ball is going to roll back if uh, players slice it or fade it. Probably going to end up in uh, those bunkers. Trouble on the left side of the fairway. So I think guys are going to try and bomb it uh, to the left and uh, just try and take the dog leg completely out of it. It's a pretty cool green. If we could take a look at the the next pic picture, the green is kind of diagonal to the fairway. Uh, you miss it to the right, absolutely no good. You see a really, really steep runoff here. So a uh, very picturesque hole, but a long drive uh, will present players with a really, really nice birdie opportunity. So uh, this is a hole I think players are going to take three wood and try and take that dog leg out of, out of the picture. We're going to move to hole 15. This is the longest hole on the course, 620-yard par 5. So um, you take a look here, what you're looking at off of the tee, and the first shot, not very difficult, not too much defense. So they're going to bomb the ball and put it into a pretty decent landing area. So it's 620 yards, so you're going to have to drive the ball 320 yards at least, which I think people will be able to if you're going to use driver on one hole on this course this is it if we could take a look at the second shot your second shot if you want to leave yourself 100 yards it could be tough because they really narrow the fairway so it almost looks like you're you should go for it in two even though you're going to come up a little bit short because if you try and lay up and you put it in the rough you made your approach shot pretty difficult so i think you're going to see guys if they hit the fairway on their drive uh, absolutely pull out a driver or uh, I'm sorry, pull out a three wood and try and get it to the green. So uh, we can take a look at the the last uh, the last picture of this. Buggers are in play kind of around the green and short. Uh, it's not a guaranteed birdie on this one, but uh, the longest players are going to be pretty upset with a par. So this is another one of these par fives that guys will probably uh, play pretty low. My guess is minus two or minus three under on this hole for the winner. And finally, this is the newest hole. They added this in 2021. Hole 17, it's 136 yard par three. Um, it's a really cool looking hole. It's got an elevated green, uh, plenty of roll off into bunkers. Uh, there are sand dunes. Um, it, it, if you come up short, it's just going to roll back 20 or 30 yards. Um, it says a lot how easy this hole is. To have a hole in one is minus 250 this week. So I think people are going to be pretty pretty uh pretty uh they're 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 shooting at this at right at this hole with not a lot of defense to it so they're gonna be fun in fact two hole in ones are are even money so uh that's your course uh overview nick if you have anything to add uh to uh hoy lake uh, the uh real liverpool golf club sure i won't say anything specifically about any holes you did a good job covering that but just kind of in general uh you mentioned rory's win here in 2014 and you know the fact they didn't dri hit driver much uh even more famous as that was tiger woods in 2006 hit one driver at this tournament now my personal take is that this year is going to play a little differently there is green uh, 
pretty much forecasted every day. Nothing crazy, nothing heavy, light rain, might be on, might be off. If there is, if that adds up, or if it's, I guess, maybe steady at one point, that will soften the course and may, make it play a little longer. So I do expect to see more drives this year. I'd be very surprised. Rory, I know he did it before, um, but if he doesn't hit a lot of driver around here, I mean, it's the best club in that guy's bag. He'd be a fool not to hit it. So I do expect this to possibly play, especially if it gets wet, a little bit more bomb and gouge, I guess you could say, uh, this week. But of course, I could be wrong if the weather doesn't turn out like that. But I, I do expect that. So I, I am personally looking at a little bit more uh, guys that are uh, that are off the tee strong, you know, long hitters. Uh, obviously, accuracy is important, but I, I'm just kind of going with guys that really knock it out there because I think it would give them a good advantage. Uh, and then, you know, I wouldn't worry about course history here. Yeah, it's been played twice before we mentioned the years, but a lot of changes. You mentioned some, Andy, and it's been so long, and I think it's going to play differently. Don't waste your time looking at the course history of those particular years. I uh, 2006 is way too far back anyway, but 2014, I wouldn't forget. Links in general, better strategy. Uh, you mentioned wind. There will be 10 to 20 mile an hour pretty much all week long. Nothing like we saw quite last week that forced them to move the tee times in Scotland, uh, but nonetheless, it won't be less than ideal conditions for the guys this week. Uh, so I do think it's going to be a good golf course, good tournament, and uh, I just don't think uh, it's going to play um, too difficult this week either, Andy, so I'm right there with you. Um, let's. Uh, we're going to get into our total strokes gain graphic, but Nick, you hit another outright winner, and uh, we are talking, your year has been fantastic. You've hit a bunch of outright winners, and I just love the, the spacing of it. You haven't had any lulls uh, with these outright winners, so... Not only have you been hitting outright, you've been hitting them at the perfect times. So tell everyone what you have up and where we can find you. Yeah, this week's pack is up. Of course, all outrights and leaderboard plays are loaded. There is a 5% leaderboard play in the pack. Uh, and Andy mentioned our promo. So you can grab this week for 29 bucks, or you can get now through the rest of the PGA Tour season, which is the Tour Championship at the end of August. So it's about six weeks. Or it's definitely six tournaments. For 99 bucks, so that's the best deal. Um, and you can find that over at my page or that long-term package over your page. Also, Andy, at wagertalk.com. So, yeah, the strokes gained, top 10 strokes gained graphic we've been doing the show with uh, for the last several weeks now. I don't think I need to break down why we're doing it any, any longer. Uh, and I don't think there's any surprise here as to who the list is in this. Uh, I will say both tournaments last week, the winner was in this graphic. Uh, Rory obviously was top of the charts at in Scotland and Vincent Norman, who I did hit on the outright was in the top, I forget two or three, but he was in the top 10 list. Uh, so it is always a great place to start. And again, no surprise here. Scotty, Rom, and Rory lead the way. The ones that like, I don't want to say piss me off the most, but like, it's like their price, the next wave, right? You see Cantley, you see Shoffley, you see Finau, even Hatton. Their price is those next favorite guys and they show it right here. So they should be priced that way, but I just... They haven't done it. Are they ever going to win a major? I don't know. So I, they all turned me off this week. But and, and you see a guy like Tony Finau, for example, I have a broken down where you can see his trend. Over a year, he's been pretty good. But in the last three months, he's the worst on this graphic. So he's not a guy that's trending in the right direction. Somebody that I want to be uh, putting on my card. And Rory um, kind of had a dip, you know, kind of mid-season or I'll say early this season. And it's really obviously stepped up his game as of late. So it is interesting to see the trends for players here. To try to get guys on the on the hot streak and Ricky of course is one of the best as far as trending upward and you know Brooks Kepa and Cameron Smith their numbers are a little jaded I guess you could say or or, or not real because it's it's measured on just the majors for them so they've had a couple good performances majors so clearly their numbers are going up but anyway this is your top 10 list Andy I uh, do like several names in this field but the Open Championship has, has uh, had long shot winners in the past, so it, this would not surprise me if you did see somebody outside of this list. I do, will definitely see some people outside of the, this list at least make you know a run in the top ten or top twenty. So don't always stick to it; just start with this to to get your tournament going. I mean, if you just run down Wyndham Clark's resume, the total strokes <laughs> gained, and what he's done this year, and then you look at his price at sixty five to one, you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't yeah, believe it. The joke. The joke. <laughs> 65 for odds for him. Major. Listen, he's got two wins in the last, what, six weeks, major, and another elevated event. And then you got Xander Shoffley or, or even Patrick Hanley, who have never won a major, priced at 25 and 28. And neither one of them have won in over a year. I guess Canley won in the playoffs, so almost a year. And Xander's been over a year. So I don't know. That's a slap in the face to Clark. I love Clark's price this week. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, great work. Yeah, that chart is absolute gold. Uh, if you want to start. Uh, picking some of the best guys start there.
Let's move on to players that can trip you up. These are players that we're looking to fade. Uh, and you've already, you just mentioned one of them here. Uh, we'll get them in just a second. So uh, these are three players that I think are going to be overpriced or overvalued. I'm going to start with Jordan Spieth yet again. Uh, he has never missed a cut at the Open Championship. He's won an Open Championship. He's finished eighth and second the last two years at Open Championship. So why in the world would we be betting against him? Friendly reminder, he is still hurt. He has a torn tendon in his wrist. Missed the cut at the Scottish Open last week. That is three missed cuts in his last four tournaments. He's struggling with driving and approaches. Uh, loaded field and an easy course. I just think he's going to struggle to keep up with everyone. We've been cashing, uh, fading him this week. We're going to do it again. And Nick, you know I love fading guys who have off course. Uh, I don't want to... I don't want to call this an issue, but things going on. Him and Justin Thomas are doing their victory lap with uh, becoming part owners of a professional soccer team. They were gallivanting around Wimbledon. Just wondering if these two guys are just kind of done with this season. They're both playing horrible. Um, I guess is Spieth, after this season is over, we don't see him for six to eight months uh, to try and get that wrist healthy. So Jordan Spieth is an absolute fade for me this week. And Xander Shoffley. You brought it up, Nick. I, I just think he ends up being overvalued here. His record on link-style courses is not great, but he's priced as a top-six guy this week. It just seems way, way too expensive. He had a miserable final round to fall out of the top 40 last week at the Scottish Open, which is a tournament he won last year. Uh, finishes at Open Championships are 20th, 2nd, 41st, 26th, and 15th, so traditionally he is not really uh, extended any value uh, to, to uh, you know, betters that have bet on him. So I, I just, when your price is a top six player, you got to perform as a top six player. I won't be playing him in any fashion this week. He's priced too high. I just think there are much better options. And finally, I think I'm going to, I'm worried about John Rom. I think they're going to be disappointed when, when they invest in Rom. He did not play in the Scottish Open last week. So I'm assuming he just wanted to take the week off, make sure he's fresh. He hasn't played in a few weeks. But he's priced as a top three golfer. It just seems too ambitious. Um, at Open Championships, he only has one top 10 finish. That was two years ago where he did finish third. Other than that, 34th last year, 11th in 2019, missed cut, 44th, 59th the last three years. In his last four events, he just has not returned value. Finished 50th at the PGA Championship. 16th at the Memorial, 10th at the U.S. Open, miscut at the Traveler. So investing in him recently has uh, not been good. Uh, you've lost money. So I'm not going to be betting on him, and I might be tempted to fade him in some matchups. Uh, it might be a little bit juicy, as I think Rory and Scheffler are going to be favorites over him. But John Rahm, he's too expensive. I just I won't have anything uh, with him this week. So let's take a look, Nick, at your first outright bet this week. Um, you're going, you're going to live golfers. Uh, you, you're, you're going with the rest of them over to live. You couldn't turn down the money. So you had to get yeah, for to live. So let's talk about, uh, which golfer you like as an outright this week. Uh, good job with your players to avoid. It's, uh, I always say you have the hardest job trying to pick favorites to avoid. It's easy to say, avoid Billy Horschel or Juice Lee. But <laughs> good job on, uh, picking those guys, AD, and I'm always happy to say, uh, I always kind of hold my breath and say, don't have any of the guys in my betting card. I do not have any of those in my betting card. So I do feel good about that. Uh, I am looking at, as one of my outrights this week, uh, it, it's Kepka. It's the major championship man himself. Uh, you know, he's not won this major, obviously, yet before, but he has been close. He did miss the cut last year, but let's forgive that, right? That was in the middle of the whole LIV golf breakout, and there was just a lot going on. And he really had a poor year as it was overall anyway. Uh, but prior to that, Kepka had finished in the top 10 in four of the previous five open championships. We know he is good enough to win. Uh, you know, right now he's obviously playing while he won the Wanamaker trophy, trophy, excuse me, at the PGA. Just two months ago, he's followed that up with four straight top 20s, including a tie for 17th at the U.S. Open. Kepka can bomb it. Again, I think that's going to be an important factor this week if it plays a little longer because it's soft. Uh, and when he is on, he is one of the best iron players on the planet. It's just a matter of whether he can get the flat stick rolling well enough this week because I think we both agree that this is going to be a lower scoring open championship. So he's going to have to make uh, a lot of buries this week. 
the key for the key for him really though is he's got to get off to a strong start i don't recall him really ever doing that well if he comes off slow he's not really a guy that catches up after he starts off slow so he's not like a live bet type of a player he's either get your eggs on him you know before the tournament starts or you probably missed your chance so that's why i'm taking right now so there are other players in targeting that i might decide to you know, choose after round one, but I'm going to put my money on Kepka early because he's one of the best front runners out there. So if he does get the lead early, I'll love my position as we get closer towards uh, that final run on Sunday. But Kepka playing well. He has good uh, results here at the Open Championship. And I think he's got the, uh, the the mental fortitude, which is important, obviously, to win the championship. I think he's in the right state of mind right now. Of course, he's healthy. That's been the big thing this year. So I like Kepka. You can get him at 22 to 1. At most books, he's down as low as 20 to 1, but that that's I'm not seeing really much lower than that, or worse than that, rather. So it's good value this week on Captain when you can get, you know, a lot of other guys that are not major championship winners, uh, like you mentioned. I uh, can't leave Xander at around the same price. I don't think it's worth it. So I like Captain this weekend. Nick Borman's got a 5% play up at wagertalk.com, coming off of yet another outright winner last week. We're going to jump to Draft Kings Darlings. Uh, this has been a really successful segment recently. Um, these are just lower-priced DFS players. Uh, I have uh, my full lineup in the article that is available on my profile page on Wager Talks. So if you want to see what the full lineup is, uh, go ahead and grab that. I'm going to start with Richie Ramsey. Nick, I, I talked about him last week. He finished 42nd last week in the Scottish Open, so what a great DraftKings darling. He got us weekend points. This guy's only 5,900. What a deal. I cannot pass him up. He has not missed the cut since March when he had to withdraw. I had to look this up, Nick, because it sounded like a made-up tournament. He withdrew from the magical Kenya Open. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I follow golf pretty hardcore, and I've never heard of the magical Kenya Open. That's the last time that Richie Ramsey has uh, missed the cut. I like that he made the cut and finished 42nd at the Scottish Open last week, so 5,900 cannot pass it up. Um, I feel like you and I could do an entire video about how criminally underpriced this man is, but getting Robert McIntyre at 6,800 seems like the steal yeah. of the DraftKings darling. He's always underrated, but this is crazy. He's finished 34th, 8th, and 6th in the three times he's played Open Championships. He's finished 4th and 2nd the last two weeks. He was one long Rory putt away from being in a playoff to win the Scottish yep. Open. This man is from Scotland. This price is insane. He should be in every lineup. And I got to give a shout out to DraftKings. They underpriced him um, here in, in DFS. I looked at the head-to-head -head matchups. You can play Robert McIntyre at minus 110 against Justin Thomas. So wow. whoever's doing the head to head, whoever's doing the head to head matchups at, at DraftKings knows they <laughs> they know that McIntyre is who would you take in that matchup? I'm taking McIntyre right now, and to be honest, it's yeah, well, that's great. So I I I think I think you could make the case that McIntyre might be the most motivated, if not a top five most motivated player this week after uh after last week uh last last week's crushing loss. So McIntyre at sixty hundred. And finally, Brian Harmon at 7,300. Harmon is playing great golf. He's finished second, ninth, and 12th the last three weeks. He's finished sixth and 19th the last two years at Open Championships. You know, his biggest weakness always is his driving distance. Not going to be an issue this week. This is not a bomb-the-ball type of course. His 12th place finish at the Scottish Open makes me really confident that he's going to see the weekend at the Open Championship. Great price on an underdog. I think he's going to be really, really well-priced uh, for top 40. Um, if this if this course and tournament plays out like we think it is, where it's an approach and putting uh, type of tournament, uh, Brian Harmon's going to look really, really good if you invest in him. So Richie Ramsey, Robert McIntyre, and Brian Harmon, three of my favorite DraftKings darlings this week. All right, Nick, coming back to you, we're going to talk a player that you like uh, for a finishing position. Who have you selected? Let's take a look at the odds and tell us who you like. Well, you'll hear an echo if you watched last week's show because I'm uh, going back to the well here on the same fella, and that's our buddy, uh, Tyrell Hatton, who is just a head case and probably won't win because he's a head case, but he had his chance on Sunday. I mean, if you, if you, watch, if you were watching the live uh, odds board, he was the betting favor for a long period of time uh, on Sunday during that final round as he came off to a hot start, kind of was up there right at, at the top, and then in typical Hatton fashion, he 
self imploded and melted down the stretch and, you know, cursed himself out of winning that championship. But to me, it just proves why you want to take him as a leaderboard bet, not necessarily an outright bet. He's playing as consistently as anyone not named Scotty Scheffler. Uh, he's got just one missed cut over the last year, and he has a run of 28 events without with only missing one cut, which is just remarkable. Over that span, 17 top 20 finishes, 12 now in the top 10. Over just his last eight, his worst finish was a tie for 27th at the U.S. Open. That's the only time in those eight that he hasn't finished in the top 20. And then, you know, you look at some of his ranks this season. He's ninth strokes gained tee to green, sixth in putting, which is uh, important this week. I think he's going to have to roll some in. Third total strokes gained, sixth scoring ever. So he's a top 10 golfer in a lot of metrics, and clearly his results are proving that as well. And one last thing I like about Hatton is a lot of guys are either bomb or a lot of guys are either, uh, you know, prodders or plotters, excuse me, where they, they don't hit it far, but they hit it accurate. He's got the rare combination of, of distance and accuracy off the tee. He's gained strokes, Andy, because of that. In every single event in 2023 off the tee, except the match play, but that's a little weird, different tournament anyway. You can't really uh, worry about that, so I'm, I don't care. But that's, you know, a guy that can drive the ball as well as, as he does, there's a reason why he's usually fixed. Uh, he's not get any unnecessarily bad lies or penalties or anything like that. So he's going to rely on the driver once again, like we saw in Scotland. And I think he's going to, once again, be up near the top of the leaderboard on Sunday. Just don't know because of his, you know, his head, own head, get out of his own way if he can actually win. But I do expect him in the top ten or top twenty uh, finish position this this Sunday. Yeah, Hatton and Flea would have just been cash cows, but again, you're just not here. Yeah. Can't bet on them to win. It's it, it's and they're almost like they're almost like polar opposites. Like Hatton too intense, Fleawood not intense enough. Like yes. they could both just meet in the middle. <laughs> get the that's all for <laughs> Uh, all right, we're going to move to a couple of segments that we added for this week. Uh, we're going to do my favorite favorite. Uh, this is we took the top five uh, best priced guys, and we each have to pick a winner out of this one. So we got Scotty Scheffler around seven to one, Rory McIlroy around seven to one, John Rahm at twelve to one, Cameron Smith at eighteen to one, and then I have Hovland and Kepka around that twenty to twenty two to one. Uh, Nick, you already talked about Brooks Kepka, so you can't take him. Out of these, you're forced. You're forced to take a really short favorite. Who are you going with out of this group? Well, I did talk about Kafka, but let's you know when you're betting outrights, you kind of want some value when you're betting outrights too. So if I was just betting one guy to win this week, it'd probably be Scotty Scheffler. And you know when you're betting a lot of outrights, it's like, well, if I'm taking Scotty, it kind of limits on what else he can do because his price isn't that great. But just purely on who I think has the best chance to win and who I like of those five guys that you mentioned. I mean, what he's doing right now, Andy, and, he, and you, you'll hit on a lot of the same stuff. I mean, it's historical. We haven't seen numbers anywhere close to what he's doing since that guy named Tiger Woods was putting up uh, numbers like he is back in the day. Uh, you know, the one difference is, of course, Tiger could punt. <laughs> Scott, yeah. Scotty King here. Uh, and all it's going to take for him, we keep saying it, is, you know, an average week on the greens and he's going to win and he probably wins by multiple shots, but he's just losing just enough strokes. A couple each is not up there, but 19 straight starts. He's finished in the top 12. Absolutely insane. We're now at seven straight top fives. That might be even more insane. And it's not like he's playing, he's playing the best events. I mean, we're talking major championships. We're talking elevated events. His T to green numbers are just absolutely insane. And you know, here, they're, 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 if you're a little wayward with some of these drives, there are some bad lies because of uh, it's been wet. You know, some of the the normally fescue where it's kind of a little thinner and you can't advance balls out of it might be a little more gnarly from what I'm hearing this week. And it could be a little bit more penalizing off the tee. I don't think he's going to have because how good he is off the tee and obviously approach. He might just have one or two less times where that happens to him, and that might be enough to propel him to victory this week. But again, to answer your question, of those five guys, I think Scotty, I would bet him every time to finish ahead of these guys. But they all any of them could win, of course, but I, I would really like Scott. I wanted to go somewhere else with it. You and I did not talk about our plays. I, I ended up on Scotty Scheffler. Yeah, you did a great job going everything. Uh I'll bring this up for 2023 plus three point one three strokes gain T to green, minus zero point zero five strokes. <laughs> um let me bring this up. Ricky Fowler's putting for the year. 
plus 0.61. Imagine if Scheffler putted anywhere, anywhere, even remotely close to how, to how good Fowler would be. I mean, it would just be, it would be back to the days when it was Tiger versus the field and Tiger was the favorite. You know, yeah, it's like, it's like putting uh, it's like putting Scotty and Cam Smith together because Cam Smith is one of the best putters out there too. So yeah, incredible. Yeah, I, I his upside is just through the roof. Uh, obviously, Rory is going to be a close second after you know coming away with the win, but I just the the sky's the limit for Scotty Scheffler. So uh, on our favorite favorites, Scotty Scheffler comes out uh, comes out on top. So. Now let's move way down the board and let's give out a dark horse. Uh, I, the elevated events in the majors are just not places where long shots are going to win. The, just the cream at the top is just way too good. But there is value on some of these dark horses. So we want to go over a dark horse that we think can cash for the top 40. So, Nick, I know you, I know you went down the list, uh, got into some names that casual golf fans may not be totally familiar with, but who's valuable as a dark horse looking at maybe this top 40 market. Andy, this, this year has been all about like the blasts from the past, right? You got the re- resurgence of Ricky. Uh, you got the resurgence of Jason Day, Justin Rose. The other guy, he hasn't won yet. Maybe he's not quite as consistent as those three I mentioned um, that has done very, very well. The resurgence is, is Gary Woodland. And right now, top 40 market, he's being priced at plus 140 at DraftKings, which I think is, is fantastic. You know, he hasn't gotten the notoriety of the other guys, which I think is a great thing because it's kept his price under the radar. But Andy, since the Masters, Woodland has finished inside the top 20 in seven, or excuse me, in the top 40 in seven of eight events uh, that he made the cut. And he just, he had that one missed cut. So it's pretty impressive. He's, if he's making the cut, he's in the top 40. And it's done it seven of the last eight times. He's gained strokes off the tee. That's always been his strength. He was one of the longer hitters out there. He's gained strokes off the tee in every one of those starts. And he's gained strokes on approach in all but that missed cut, which was at the PGA. Um, but he can still slap it out there with the best of them. And Wood- Woodland is is no, you know, he's no uh, first timer at these Open Championships either. He's finished inside the top forty in uh, four of his first five Open Championships. Now he hasn't been great since because he hasn't done so in any of his last five. But then again, that's what I'm talking about—the resurgence. Gary Woodland wasn't really somebody we talked about over the last four years either. So. He's coming back. He's playing well. He has history here. He's in the right state of mind right now. I think he's got confidence. I love the price at plus 140. I honestly thought we'd see him at, you know, work at best minus 110 for a top 40. So anything in the plus neighborhood, I think is great on Gary Woodland this week. I'm going to have to agree with you on this one. Uh, Gary Woodland happened to be in one of the feature groups that I was watching because I had a wager on, on the guy he was with. So I actually got okay. to watch a lot of Gary Woodland. Looks pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. I, I have to say I, I was paying attention to my guy more, but uh, Woodland, I, th- I thought he looked uh, pretty good. And honestly, that was the first time I got to watch an entire round with him. You know, he's normally not not in these feature groups or yeah. anything, but, uh, you yeah, know, so. Uh, but really good pick. I like that one. For mine, I'm going to go with the postman, JT Posted. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. This is a, this is definitely a uh, recent form bet, but. If you're looking at who's one of the hottest guys in the game right now, last two weeks, JT Poston, 13th in total strokes gained over the last two weeks, plus 1.76 strokes gained putting. Um, he was sixth last week at the Scottish Open, sixth the week before that at the John Deere. And I think those courses share a little bit of similarities to this week's course. You don't have to be long off the tee. You can score low if your approach is in your putting is hot. His approach numbers have not been fantastic, but he still shot minus six and minus 16 at those tournaments. So that tells me he can go low. Um, I don't know if he's going to continue very long finishing in the top 10, but I just need one more week where he's putting the ball really well. And this is the type of course where his irons could be dialed in and he could continue his really good putting streak. Uh, This is a fantastic price at plus 150 on the postman. Um, I'm just, man, I'm staring at that sixth place last week at the Scottish Open. I'm going, gosh, he, you know, even if he regresses back a little bit, maybe you get a little bit of stronger field, I think he can pull it off. So Gary Woodland and JT Poston, Nick and I like at plus money to finish inside the top 40 as our dark horses. We're going to uh, finish up the show with our winning prediction. Uh, Nick and myself both have 5% plays up at wagertalk.com. 
$29 for the play for this week. If you want to finish out the season with us, uh, $99 for Nick or myself for the rest of the season. That's six more tournaments. So uh, that's a great deal. You'll get this week, and then we'll finish out the season all the way through the championship. Both of our plays are up at wagertalk.com. Nick, winning score. We've gone over the course. We've gone over the players. Uh, we've thrown out some some winners. Now we need to know, what is the winner going to shoot at the Open Championship? What do you think? Uh, I think we're both in agreement that it's going to be uh, lower scoring, and I'm going to go with 16. I think we're going to see a 16 under uh, lift the title. This all comes down to the weather. I know right now, though, what the weather is uh, 10 to 20 mile an hour winds, a little bit of rain uh, in forecast pretty much every single day. All it really takes, though, um, is one, even if it's just like one wave or session, like right the afternoon session one day or or whatever, where the wind picks up a little bit more than forecasted, it, it, it could really hurt what the winning score is. We saw it, you know, in Scotland this past week, only two guys, there was a 14 and 15, everybody else was 10. So, and, and obviously the weather got pretty windy there. They moved tee times around. So it could, you know, go past or go lower than 16 if the weather cooperates and it ends up being nicer than expected. But I think 16 is kind of just that, like, uh, I, it's like in the middle ground. It could be a little lower, it could be a little higher because of the weather, but I'm going to go right there in the middle and hope that, uh, that, that, I'm, that I'm right. But I'm thinking it's going to be a uh, low scoring either which way, but 16 seems right. Yeah, we're on the same page. I got a little bit more ambitious. I came up with minus 18. I've, I've got it one shot higher than uh, 2014 uh, when, when they played here. I It would not surprise me if someone shoots a minus eight round this week. Yeah. Uh, like you said, if, if there could be a way that gets a little bit of, of harsher weather. That looks like it could be on Saturday. But if there's a way that gets perfect conditions, like just a little damp where the greens are great, there's not a lot of wind. Uh, this course is so gettable. Um, this kind of happened at the U.S. Open, where the first round we had really, really low scores, and then it kind of tapered off. So I just think yep. this course uh, with this talented field, there's going to be a couple guys that go really, really low. I think it could set up for a really exciting Sunday finish. Um, if you got three or four guys that are just, you know, birdie after birdie and, you know, hitting amazing shots. So I'm going to go with minus 18. So Nick and I are aligned that whoever's going to win, it is going to be a fairly low score. So... All right, guys, that is going to do it for us for the Open Championship. Make sure you get all of your DFS lineups and seasonal fantasy lineups locked in before the early start. Uh, don't forget, it is over on the, the other side of the pond. So make sure you lock all those lineups in. Get your bets in. Go find myself and Nick Borman at wagertalk.com. We both have 5% plays up. Let's have a great last major of the year. Good luck on all your bets, and we will see everyone next week on a Wager Talk Extra.